Welcome to the 77th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome returning friends. We're glad you could join us. And also for those of you joining us for the first time, we're so glad you could be here. We've got lots on the plate today to, to share with you. Um, the winners are going to be announced. Uh, do we know when they're going to be announced on the podcast? Uh, we will announce them in the crafting section. In the crafting section, we will announce the winners. So uh, stay tuned for that. Lots to share with you today. Before we begin, Colleen will talk about what we're wearing. So first of all, let's talk about what May is wearing. And she is wearing a smaller version of the Copenhagen Calling uh, cowl. So instead, you don't like things too much wrapped around. So instead of twice around, I decreased the number of stitches. The whole idea for doing this was because May loves cashmere. So the yarn that I used is Concept by Kat's, Katya Cashmere 30. It's so soft. It I is love so it. soft. I love it. And you yeah. know what? When you look at this uh, photo here, mm -hmm. you can see how much is here. That would right. drive me crazy. Yes. So uh, this was perfect. Good. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed yeah, it. So that you. pattern's by Isabel Kramer. It's a lovely pattern. And right now, I'm going to see in my stash if I have... Um, enough it needs DK yarn and I'm going to see if I have some DK yarn that I could make one because when I pulled this out for you to wear I thought oh I would like to have yes. one of those now I have worn this in previous podcasts I don't remember yes. which one but I know I've worn it in a podcast before, exactly before, exactly because at one point in time May was saying that it was all about me and cashmere, but we figured out it's all about you and me. cashmere too. <laughs> I'm cashmere worthy, what you said. You are cashmere worthy, no <laughs> doubt about it. Um, so that's what May is wearing. And I am wearing the Lemmy Cowl by Laura Nelkin. So this was one of her Lola's kits. Um, and so it has a little bit of bling it's around cute. the top. It's lovely. You don't have to, you can buy the pattern. You don't have to put the bling in. If you're thinking about trying something with beads, this is a great pattern to try. And Laura Nelkin's very good about giving tutorials about how to handle the beads. Did you get the yarn with this? Because you've got yes. the same yarn as in the picture. Exactly. So this is Madeline Tosh um, hand dyed yarn. This is Twist Light and it's called undergrowth is what the colorway is so sometimes there are three different colors and you don't know which one's going to arrive sometimes it's only one color okay being a non-knitter mm -hmm. and i don't want to say that in a podcast it's a knitting podcast it's okay we uh, need you here <laughs> um so once you've paid for this pattern it's a paid for pattern or paid for kit okay so there's two asking. ways to go okay okay so the first way is you become part of lola's club and so it's every other month she sends out the kits. So the kit has a pattern in included, yarn included, beads included. Um, usually there's a little candy treat of some kind. Not always, but not always, but sometimes. And um, so anyway, that's one way. Once it's gone out to the club members, she will post it um, and then you can buy the pattern itself. Okay. So once you've bought this pattern mm -hmm. and she has in this kit, so you can use any color you want. Like you happen to get that yarn in this kit that you pay for. Right. And so now that you have that pattern, if you wanted to do this again. Right. And add different beads and do different colors, you could, you're welcome to do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. How nice is that? Then? Exactly. And as I said, if you don't want to be part of the Lola's Club, that's okay too because you still can buy the pattern. It tells you what size of beads you need, how many beads you need, um, and and it actually even says you don't need to put beads on it at all. I can totally see you doing this in purple. Just saying. You know what? <laughs> I'm sure there are purple beads in my life, so I'm sure I can find them. What I like about this, right now I'm a little warm because we've got some lights on us, but what I like about this is when you go outside in the winter, and you don't have something around your neck. It is cold. It's colder. So this kind of allows me to have a turtleneck. This shirt doesn't have one. It allows me to have a, what I call a blingy turtleneck. Uh -huh. And that's what's going well, on. Well, you know what? In saying that, Colleen, pre-Colleen knitting all these cowls for me, I never used to wear a scarf or anything like this. And mm -hmm. I'd go out in the cold and I was always bitter cold and I hated going outside and blah 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 and then since you've been knitting these and mm -hmm. I go outside and I put something around my neck right makes all the difference in the world exactly so thank you you're very welcome no problem now the other bit of bling I have on is my earrings and these um, I got on Etsy and it's from Annie Lesperance so that's what it is and so um, 
you buy the hoops and you can buy the little charms with them. If you buy the one hoop with charms, then you can also just buy the charms if you want to have different colors to change up. So they're very light. I can hardly feel that they're on, but I know they add a little bit of bling. Yeah, they do. They look good. So I just decided today it was the bling day. That's what I decided. <laughs> so that's what we're wearing. And next we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object is the vest from the Best in Toys by Mary Maxim. Now, I went on to the Mary Maxim website today to see if the kit was still there. Now, I couldn't find the kit, but I did find the pattern, and the pattern itself is $1.99. Oh, good. And I will tell you, this pattern is worth twice that. Um, so, because the, the uh, toys themselves, the balls are great, and little kids love them, but this vest I've done a couple of times, and I'm very happy with it. And it turns out nice. Like, when you show it, you'll see that, I mean, these balls are so cute. Like, can you imagine getting that as a gift with the two balls? It's exactly. so great. Exactly. So, here is the wee vest. Nice. And so, as I mentioned, my niece in Australia is expecting a wee baby boy, and I think in Australia you could put it, just a t-shirt underneath that when it's warm <laughs> and it should be okay. So I'm happy how it should. This cable is really nice and it kind of comes around um, and it really sets up really nicely. So the yarn that I used is that Snuggly Wuggly. Um, and so it, soft and it it's is a lovely color loops and threads. Blue. And so it's machine washable, dryable, and I really like the color of blue. Now this goes with the hat, which is the basic baby hat by um, Heather Tucker. And it goes with the wee socks which are the Baby Socks DK version by Kate Atherley. And so I'm just going to, if you can hold all of that, sure. I don't know if you can, I'm making you... Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Vanna will do that for you. All right. So the ball that I bought, I bought two of them. I didn't need two, but didn't know that. Um, it's a five ounce ball. So it's um, 408 meters. So that's what that is. And that would do, that one ball that does did all, of all of that. And I still had that much left. Nice. Exactly. So I'm really, so really happy. So beautiful and that. soft. That's great. Yes. It's I'm not going to be, you know, what I like that. about it, it's not going to be tough going over the child's head. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and you won't have to struggle getting the arms in either. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. <laughs> it's a good plan. Yes. Now, I used to, when I was knitting little sweaters for little babies, I would always, after I was done doing the knitting, I would pull it over my own head to make sure that it would be able to go over the baby's head. Well, you've got head. a tiny head. You wouldn't want to do that on my head. The shirt would be like this big, the sweater. Well, I have to tell you, the people that I knit those baby sweaters for were always so thrilled because she said, it's the only sweaters that they don't have any trouble going over their head. So that, that was worked a good out well. Move. It was. So my second finished object is the flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. This is a free pattern. So if you've never, never knit a sweater, I would suggest this pattern. Is this the one you're going to give to my mom? The sweater or the pattern? The pattern. The pattern. <laughs> I'm going, just a second. <laughs> no, the pattern. It is the pattern. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to give it to your mother. Let her know that it's free. So I use the jeans, and that's by Lion Brand Yarn, and this is the brand new colorway. And it's all done. I love it. Now, there is a I front and a back. I love the sleeves in this. There we go. So the sleeves have the garter detail all the way down, and I love it. It's going to be very comfy. This to wear. looks really great for me holding it up, but it's not. Really, you can't really see until you model it. Like it looks really nice on. Yeah. So I think we need to mod. You need to model this or wear it on the next podcast. Okay, or I can do that for yeah, sure. Yeah, because it's the sleeves in this are beautiful. I love Thank them. Thank you. Yeah, it I really gives really it a like it. A little bit of uh, design or something. Exactly, and I. Um, I have knit this in a smaller version to give for a baby gift and it looks, that looks really nice. I knit it in kind of a cream color and it looked really nice as yeah. well. So you can knit this in different sizes then? Yes, this pattern, um, and I don't have it with me, but they go from baby sizes all the way to... To my size? Oh! And then some. <laughs> <laughs> and then some. Oh good. Yeah. So at some point in time, if you decide you want me to knit you a sweater, well, there you it go. can happen. All right, well, let's do it. Okay. There we Maybe go. Maybe a vest or something, because I don't have to worry about the sleeves. Well, I like the sleeves, though, in this. That's the whole thing I like about the sleeves. Exactly. The I sleeves. could just knit you the sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> that looked pretty funny going to the grocery store <laughs> naked and two sleeves. Did it sleeves? Yeah, yeah. It might cause a stir. Yeah. Just a little stir. 
Okay, that is really nice. I, I wouldn't mind getting one of those whenever you get a free minute. And okay. I, don't, I know you don't have too many free minutes, but that is wonderful. Good, and soft. I think your mom's going to like the pattern yes. as well. All right, so that's my second one. My third finished object, and these were just about finished last time, is the Prairie Socks by KF Jones. And I used the Merino Yak Regia Premium. This yarn, oh my goodness, it is so beautiful. It shows texture really, really well. And there they are. Washed, blocked. Tattooed. <laughs> no, Look, no tattooed. Know, <laughs> <laughs> Those are really nice. I really, really like it. And nice. these blockers are different blockers than the, I had the one on last time. Um, and this actually shows the socks off better. Nice contrast. I like the contrast. Yeah. Green to boot. Nice. Exactly. Those are great. I'm really, really happy with them. Yeah. Nice. Exactly. Yeah, they feel nice and soft. They do. This feels different too. The heel feels soft. Toes yeah. are soft. I'm very happy with it. This good. pattern is we a... We like it when you're happy. Oh, good. <laughs> now, somebody we know is the next person in the family to have their birthday. So, uh -huh. not for a while. So, I'm thinking I'm going to do this pattern for oh, you. Oh, that'd be great. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not telling you what color. I'm My birthday telling. isn't until April, but... Thing. That's you've got lots of time. Exactly. Well, knitting has to happen, so <laughs> we need to do that. Now, my last finished object is called the Sock Set Shawl, and that's by Cozy Up Knits. And I used a sock set by Polka Dot Creek, um, and she's in Airdrie, Alberta. And the colorway, main colorway is birch, and the two are spruce and chocolate. And I love this now i've had this done for a while and i have just finished blocking and there we beautiful are. colors i know i have a sweater that is about that color beautiful now do they have the color did they call this as a particular color or or is it just colors that you chose or they have lots of times you can buy a sock set which usually is a main skein, which is what this birch is, and then you can either get a mini skein or you can get two mini skeins. This was actually a sock set with two mini skeins, and it came just as it is. But I had seen this on the Cozy Up Knits podcast and thought, oh, those are colors that I those really would really like to do. Those are really nice colors. I'm really, really pretty. Yeah, they happy nice. They that. nice. Uh, they're nice together. Yeah, and, and it's a nice size that. again. Like this yes, is a really nice size. Exactly, not too big, not too small, small just, just the size, size of Montreal. <laughs> oh yes, here we go. <laughs> We've been home way too long. <laughs> Alrighty, so those are my finished objects in May. How about you? Yes, I did. I finished a little tiny basket. I don't know if you can see. I don't have it with me, but uh, there's the picture of it, and it came from this book called uh, Dollhouse Miniatures, and it's from a lady called Ju Julie Warren. Mm -hmm. And if you go on uh, YouTube, you'll see that Julie um, makes beautiful things, miniature things. And you know what? What's it's exciting for me to see. Well, not exciting, but. It's amazing because my workspace is a total disaster. <laughs> and you go into Julie Warren and she's got everything cut out perfect and the whole place is perfect and she glues and she doesn't get glue anywhere. When I glue, I got glue on my fingers, on my glasses. Um, exactly. Anyway, so I really enjoy her and she, she does a lot of great things. And I purchased her book about a few months ago and I was able to do like the instructions in here for, it's very, for things it's are very good. Book. And so the basket was, was in there, like the instructions are great. I don't wanna, you can see kind of upside down there, but. Um, now Ruma has it. You were gonna put a little there. yarn in your basket. Yes, so what I'm planning on doing is uh, make, well I've made the basket. So what I'm planning on doing is uh, I'm going to make some knitting needles and some yarn and put them inside and then maybe have that knitting lady beside it. Oh, perfect. Yeah. But anyway, that was my finished object that I got the pattern from Julie Warren's book and it was great. Perfect. Yes. Well, that sounds great. So next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress is the Kairos Cowl by Laura Nelkin. Now this was the kit that May bought me for Christmas, which is lovely. Um, it is a really interesting construction. It's a paid for pattern. I did, um, it was purchased with the kit. Um, and so all the things came together. So there were all the beads. There were two things of yarn. So one is Emma's yarn, um, Practically Perfect Sock. And the other one is the same idea, but it's a small. So. The main color 
is this. It's called Good Juju, is what it's called. And this one was called Sweet Magnolia. So that's what the kit came with. Nice. Now, this I can't spread out. And the reason for that, I'm not going to talk about anything about the construction because it is a paid for pattern, but it's a Mobius construction. I can talk about that. There's a word. It, it is. is. And I have done a Mobius cowl before. And I found a pattern because I thought that might be a good thing to do a tutorial about. Is what does that mean? Okay. So a Mobius construction, I was demonstrating you. The, so it's when you take... Um, something that's straight and before you join it you give one side a twist okay so normally when you're knitting in the round it says be careful not to twist your stitches and when you do something in Mobius you absolutely want to twist your stitches just mm -hmm. the one time and then what happens is you get this continuous edge and so this is amazing because it is continuous it's a long edge um, but it just means you keep going round and round and round, even though you're kind of doing this infinite loop is what you're doing. So when we hold this up, we gotta be careful then that we're not holding it up. Well, the good news, yeah, um, I can't, because my cord isn't quite long enough. So you can see right here, there's the right side and there's the wrong side, because that's the, there's a twist in it. There's some beading on the edge. I love where they've, where she's placed the beads in this. And the neat thing about it, is there's also what's called a Kairos cuff. Um, and what she's done is given you enough beads and enough yarn that you can make that cuff and then actually do it like it's a, um, a shawl cuff. Oh, nice. Exactly. Those beautiful beads on there. I know. Nice. I love it. So it's beautiful. Um, we were... <laughs> It'll be nice when it's all done. We'll it will be because it's really hard to show you right. what it actually looks like, but right. you'll see it on the next right one. Right now, it kind of looks like a ball of yarn with some beads on it. Exactly, but I, which I is right now all it is. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. But I really loved this colorway, and I the yarn is so beautiful. This Emma's yarn. Um, it's always fun because we went to Four Pearls Yarn Store in in Florida, Florida when we were there. It so was. it was lots of fun. Um, so I'm really enjoying this. Um, it would be a great thing to do for a gift. Um, you don't have to do the beads on it either. So if you like the pattern, but you're not sure about the beads, that's okay. Then you just make the pattern. So you can see she's very good at designing Miss Laura Nelkin because that's all I've got left of that. <laughs> um, the good news is I don't need that to make the, the little cuff. So that's my first one. That's the Kairos cowl. All right, my next one is also a Laura Nelkin pattern and it's called the Mingle Cuff. Now, the really interesting thing about that pattern, and it is mercerized cotton is what it comes with, uh, mercerized pearl cotton, is that you can do it either by knitting or you can do it by crocheting. And so what I decided to do, I thought, well, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try crochet. Now, it makes my life interesting because I can crochet, but I'm not the best crocheter in the world. This is like crocheting in miniature almost, I know. isn't it? It's amazing. So there it is. Now it needs to be blocked. I still have all this left. I might be able to make another one. So there it is. Now the nice thing is if I find that the size is a little not what it should be because I was, I deba I was debating between two sizes. I can always do something to change it up a little bit. So you can do what you just did that cowl and then have a bracelet to match. Yes, I could. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. So this is really nice. I loved the crochet version, the way the beads were. When you knit this one, um, the beads just stack up on each other. But when you crochet it, they kind of do this spiral thing. So I'm really, really happy with it. But it does curve a little bit and I need to finish it and then block it and then we'll be in better shape. But I, I'm really happy with it. And I wear black a lot. And so I think that will be nice. Cool. The beads are kind of gray and blue and black so it's very very nice so that's that now my next work in progress you're so busy oh my goodness well let's talk about it first of all I'm going to say the designer's name because I'm going to show you three patterns so the first pattern um the lady's name is Carolyn Glaus Todrink all the three patterns I'm going to show you are free and I would recommend any of them like they're beautiful so I started knitting 
using the Songbird yarn and fibers. It's the Black Build Magpie, and this is her sock base, which is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. Beautiful yarn, by the now, way. Now, do you know where to get these free patterns from? Yes, I got them on Ravelry. Oh, there you go. So just go on to Ravelry and you can get them there. I started making this one, which is called the Bee Simple Shop. And I was liking it, I was enjoying it, and then all of a sudden, the yarn just started to pool a little bit. Not horribly, and it would have been fine, but I thought maybe I'm going to change it up a little bit. So how was I going to change it up a what bit? What do you mean pool a little bit? It means that um, because this pot, this yarn has dark and light, it meant like there were places where all this light stuff was sitting and all this dark okay. stuff was sitting. I, it usually doesn't bother me, and it really didn't bother me, but I thought, I'm going to try the other one that she has, and this is called um, Be Simple Variations. So that's what that is. It's got some eyelets in it. You can either put a pico border or not a pico border. I'm going to see how big it gets, and then that's I'll nice. that up. I'm that's really, really happy nice. with that. That's what I decided to use. But while I was looking at those, mm, I have plans. <laughs> I found this one, which is called the Stony Point Cowl. So it's still by Carolyn Glau's Tawdrank, still free. And this is nice and light. Um, she's used some yarn that has mohair and fine wool. And it is beautiful. It, it's really, really pretty. So let's take a look at what I've got. So this yarn has so many pretty colors. There's green, there's black, there's blue, there's white. And here we go. Let's see what we've got. So once again, my cord is too, sh is too short to show it all. Up. But you can see that it opens up. So my idea, when I was thinking about putting all these eyelets in, my idea was, well, if I wear a white turtleneck and put this over top, then the white turtleneck will show through. Right. If I wear a black turtleneck, the black turtleneck will show through. You know, and I could also, the nice thing about this is I could wear a navy turtleneck as well. Yeah. So this colorway, this is when we had 10 minutes to shop, <laughs> which <laughs> this is nice. was at the nest in Stratford. But I love this yarn. It's beautiful. The colors are gorgeous. And I love that she uses the color of birds because nature doesn't make mistakes. So yeah. it's really, really good. Yeah, that's um, great. And I'm really, really happy with that. So I did start it and rip it out and then start again, but I'm happy with what I decided. So that's that. Now, my last work in progress is in fact a work in progress. So I am doing the throwing it back and it is a mystery knit along by the Cozy Up Sisters, by Cozy Up Knits. And I'm using yarn from Dire Wolf. So those are the colors. And the main color is Silver Fox by Lichen and Lace. Now, beautiful, but we have to do spoiler alert. So if you are doing this mystery knit along and you have not completed clue two, then don't look. Okay, <laughs> just for the next two minutes, don't look. Because here it comes. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so here is what I have. So this is done clue one and clue two. And I am loving this. So there's texture and there's color and I love the Silver Fox. Um, initially the kit that I bought had black as the main color and I just, because of, you know, it gets light and dark in my eyes and texture, I'm really happy that this, this light gray is gonna show it off much better. Looks great. I'm Come really, along. really happy with it. But I'm, I should be getting clue three either today or tomorrow early. So I'm very excited about it and working hard at it, but it is so much fun. And the colors I'm really, really happy with. Perfect. So those are my works in progress. And how about you, May? Yeah, you know what? I've been practicing the guitar. Oh, that's a work um, in progress. That is definitely a work in progress. <laughs> I do that almost every day. Oh, that's great. Um, and I've been just puttering away with my uh, miniatures. Okay. Um, so there's lots of things in the go. Right. Um, yeah. Perfect. So, but nothing to show. Okay. No All problem. Right. So next we're going to talk about our craft adventure. Well, I've been busy doing my little miniatures for my group. Uh, I don't have anything to show, but um, I know that you've been busy with crafting and I know we also mentioned that we would mention the winners. 
I don't know if you want to mention the winners now or you want to talk about your Well, we're going to leave them in suspense just a little while longer. Not too much longer, but a little bit longer. So the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about blocking, the before and after of blocking. The first shawl that I blocked is the Skagen shawl. And that's by Paula Emmons Fusel. And I used the Remix Light, and I have to be honest with you, I wasn't sure how it would block because it has nylon, cotton, acrylic. Um, that's the majority of it. And then it's 10% silk and 9% linen. So I wasn't sure how it would block um, or whether I would need to steam block it, but I just blocked it the usual way. So I used some soak and let it soak, and then I pinned it out. So do you have a picture here of before it's blocked? Yes. So first of all, you'll see a picture before it's blocked and you will see that the lace is kind of wobbly. It's not very open. And so my job when I was doing my blocking was to pin it out, not crank it out, but just pin it out to open up the lace. And so you'll see a picture of it blocked. Now I use the Knitter's Pride blockers. Um, in this case and I, I think I have three sets of them that's a good number to have um, and it allows me if I don't have an exact straight line then I don't use a blocking wire so I used some pins just to pin out the edge and you'll understand why and then blocked it that way so you'll see a picture of it actually on the blocking mats now let's take a look at how it ended up so this is after it's blocked this is after it's blocked so wow. I have some ends that need to be woven in I have not done my homework, I apologize. <laughs> but you can see this, the lace is much more open. And the other thing that I did was I pinned out these little V's, which allowed the lace to open. And so I'm really, really happy how that came out. So blocking made a big difference it in this. It made a huge difference, absolutely. It turned out nice. I'm really, really, really nice. happy with it. So I now I can this. cut my ends off. You gotta be careful when you fold these after they're blocked um, or no well not really i mean i must admit i had it draped over the couch for it right. for the podcast but i i there's ways that you can kind of roll it up so oh. it won't be so it's kind of like when you iron something you ever iron or steam something yes and it's like oh yes. <laughs> exactly. you put it on for two seconds and it's all wrinkled <laughs> that is exactly what happens all right so that's the first one now the second thing that i blocked was the eight crazy nights by Cozy Up Knits. And I used the um, kit, which was the Dyer a Wolf Yarn Company. And it was her Eight Crazy Nights um, set. Now, we talked last time about the fact that I didn't use all the yarn, and I'm very glad that I didn't because I'm not tall. And so if I have too much stuff around my neck, it's not good. You look like you're wearing a blanket. Exactly. So this one actually blocked out amazingly. There wasn't, there was a little bit of eyelets on the end to block out, but it just So we have bloomed. a before, before picture. Yeah. So there's going to be a before picture before I blocked it. Here. Mm-hmm. And then you will see it blocked and you can see all of a sudden it's gone from having four blocking mats to having six blocking mats because it got bigger. The other thing that this one needed is um, I need, I had two straight edges and I used blocking wires in this one. So it's a little bit different. And this is amazing. The texture, oh, this is nice. the texture shows up a lot different. There's the eyelets at the bottom. I'm really, really happy with it. And I'm glad I stopped. I mean, I had added the other sections on and I just knew it was going to be way too big. Well, it's a perfect size. And you know, did you find the difference blocking this too? Like before? Absolutely. Like it, it, in some cases will make the yarn a little softer. It opens it up. The texture seems to pop a little bit more. Um, so I knit for, we will not say the number of years that I knit <laughs> before I ever blocked an item. I may have pinned something out, but I would never say that I actually blocked something like I do now. And it is worth the time and it's worth the effort. Well, if there ever was an advertisement for blocking, you're it. Yeah, uh, Cause absolutely. Because, you know, a lot of times I'll walk around in the house in the basement and I'll open, open. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my exercise gig there. Exactly, exactly. Dodging and weaving. So the blocking. good news is 
we've been doing a little bit of exercising in the basement while gyms are closed down. And the good news is I found a spot that we can do our jogging around. So it worked out okay. Yeah. All right. So that is my blocking. Now, you will see up on our YouTube channel that there is um, a tutorial for making stitch markers and progress keepers. Um, and so there were a number of different times that we did. So that's the other kind of craft that we did. I'm just going to take them off this pin. Um, and I know that May has pictures, but so there is an example of a progress keeper. Can you yeah, do me a favor sure. and that up? Because I'm okay. And here are a few. You need to watch that tutorial because Stitch Marley will show you how to make all of these. Exactly. You'll lots of fun. Pro. Yeah, lots of fun. There you go. And there's another progress keeper, which, That's by cute. the way, it's done on a lever back earring. And every time I see that purple one, I think, yeah, I'll just find another and purple bead and I'll have an earring. <laughs> It'll be good. All right. So I'm just mentioning that because what we've decided to do with our giveaway, that's our New Year's giveaway, what we've decided to do is give away um, one um, progress keeper and three stitch markers um, and I'll show you what they're going to look like. So that's what will come. That's nice. That's okay. a nice little gift for you to do that. Exactly. And you know, thank you so much for subscribing and uh, we haven't reached our thousand yet. No, so we were hoping. Um, yep. If you're a new viewer and you haven't subscribed, please do that now. Exactly. Um, because our goal is to get to a thousand. We're not quite there yet, and yep. we are going to have a giveaway on the thousand, the project. Exactly. Bed. That's but right. until then, we are going to give away nine of these. Nine of these. Now, um, I have some. I'll just show you a few of them. It's going to be random whoever gets what. I'm just going to basically say, May, close your eyes and pick one, and that's the one that's going to come to you. But you will be getting this. So these are needle cozies, and I have to tell you, um, if you'll hold that up, sure. that's what we call a needle cozy. Now, how can you use it? So option one is you use it using DPNs. So if you use um, DPNs to make your socks, this will be helpful. It keeps them safe. But you may say, well, I don't make socks or I don't use DPNs. So I'm just going to show you if you have circular needles, then what you can do is tuck them in and snap. Cool. And it'll keep it safe. Now, some people will say, well, maybe not safe enough. So what you can do, oops, that's what happens when you've got good snaps, is you can put one needle one way, one needle the other way, and once again, throw it in, and then snap it, snap it in, and then that'll keep it set for you, which is good, okay? Then you don't have needles poking through your project bag, those kind of things. Oh, that's a great idea. All right. So we're giving nine of these away today. Nine of these away. And exactly. we've picked the winners. We've picked the winners. We used a random number They don't generator. all look like this. They all come no. in various colors and sizes. So I'll just sizes. throw a few, a few more. more. So there's another one. There's a wee sheepy one. Yeah, that, there we go. So there's just some of them. Um, I have two more to finish up, so I will do those. Um, and so here are the winners. So what you need to do for us is if you see your name here, then what you need to do is go on to Ravelry and email us. Now we are MC Knit Adventures on Ravelry. So just email us and you say, I won, I was one of the winners, here's my address, and then we'll get it mailed away to you. Now, is there a deadline to maybe give us the address, like a couple of weeks? Yes, let's do it well, two we'll do weeks. weeks. Two weeks till our next podcast, yes. and then it's completely done. Like, it's too late after that? Right, I think that's fair. That yeah. gives you lots of time, because I know you can't always Be see, on, yeah. Yeah, see the podcast, so it gives you a little bit of extra time. All right. Are you ready? Are I'm you drum ready. rolling? Yes. All right, so our first winner is Penny Corrigan. There you go, Penny. I feel like these people are our friends. Exactly. Like, you know, like, because you've been kind of emailing us and, and talking to us and making comments for exactly. a few years Which now. Which we really appreciate. Yes. That's good. Penny. Exactly. And yeah. I am going to apologize if I pronounce anybody's name wrong, but we'll do the best. The next one is Betty Bunny. So that's our second winner. Congratulations, Betty. Yes. The third winner is Karen Grammy Knitterbug. Karen. The next winner is Teresa Nogle. Congratulations, Teresa. The next one is Maritza Korea. 
Now the next one's easy to pronounce. So it's Cece. There you go. Congratulations, Cece. Mm -hmm. And then we have Naughty Thistle. Naughty Thistle, congrats. And then the next one is Marianne and Bob Stoner. There you go. Mm -hmm. And our last winner is Lunaster. Lunaster. Lunaster, I think. Congratulations. Yes, yeah, so those are our nine winners. So once again, um, you get us at on our Ravelry page, and that is MC Knit Adventures. Just give us an email um, through Ravelry and let us know I was one of your winners. We'll get that out to you, put in your and address. And give us your address, and then we'll, we'll get, get that, that out. out so, so once again, not only do you get that the needle cozy, but you'll also get some stitch markers and a progress keeper. And thanks again for subscribing. Really appreciate it. Really exactly. appreciate all your Happy New Year wishes too to us. Um, exactly. Anybody that uh, contributed. So thank you so much. And uh, watch for that next uh, giveaway when we reach 1,000 subscribers. We're so close. Oh my goodness, we're I so know. close. It's exciting. It is. It gives us a goal, you know. Exactly. When we started this, we're like, if we people, three people watch us, at least <laughs> get three people to watch us. And now we're up to this this over 900. So, so it's thank really, you so really much. exciting. Thank yes. you so much. So next we're going to talk about souvenirs. My first souvenir, you've already seen, it's my earrings. So thank you, Mom. She gave me some money for Christmas and that's what I got. So I really <laughs> am thankful of that. Uh, my next souvenir came out of necessity, the first part, um, because the yarn, that silver fox lichen and lace, doesn't have the same yardage as the other yarn that I needed for the mystery knit along. So I needed to make sure I had enough. Um, so I placed an order and it came very quickly. So I needed another ball of the Silver Fox Lichen and Lace. Where did you order this from? It is from Knit Stitch. It came in this lovely little bag. There That's you go. the bag that was at the door I picked up the other day. Exactly. So I had said to the owner who is Suzanne, thank you Suzanne, I had said to her, do you want me to come down and pick it up? She goes, nope, I'll just drop it to you, which was very nice. It was very nice to do. Um, so I picked that up. And then the next thing that I picked up was some of these colorful stitch stoppers by Coco Knits. Now, the funny thing is... Sorry, did you order that online? Like, did you order... I, on the order line, yes, it was an online order. Okay. And I just, when I filled out it out, I said I would come pick it up. Oh, okay. Now... The funny thing is <laughs> that I ordered these because I've liked them for a long time and I thought that would be nice in my knitting kit. And then when I did the um, Mobius cowl, I needed to have those at the end of some DPNs uh -huh. so as so part good of that it. You got them then. Exactly. So the nice thing is there's all different sizes. So if you've got a bigger so needle. What exactly do they do? So all you have to do. Here, I'll show you what happens. I could use these in my crafting thing. Ah! Glue. Okay. <laughs> She's not gluing anything. So there's the needle, there's the tip, and it goes in there so that your stuff won't fall off. Oh, cool. That's it. Oh. And that's why you have different sizes. So you better hide these for me because I can think of lots of things I could use these for in my little miniatures. Mm -hmm. Come home one day and they're crazy glued to something. <laughs> well, the okay, good news go well. is I know where I can order them from yeah. again. <laughs> Maybe I know what to get her for her birthday. I'll get her some of these. <laughs> Not till April. That's we'll what do. happens when you do miniatures. You look at everything so differently. You look I at can things imagine. and you look at things, the world in a whole different way. Exactly. Uh, you know, little piece of tinfoil. Oh, I know what I could use that for. Exactly. Same thing with the toothpick. I'm a sure toothpick. there's still... a toothpick or a lid or something. Oh, that yeah. would make a great drum. Absolutely. Make... All right. So I was ordering those things and then I saw this. And this is a Life in the Long Grass, which I've wanted to have some for a while. This is their Blue Dusk colorway in its twist sock. And where is it made in me? Where is it made in? Mm -hmm. Can you see? Oh, it's made in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And it's all the way here to this, mm -hmm. to Knit Stitch. Uh -huh. in I London, wonder how much it costs to import this. We don't even want to talk about so was, it, but like, it is Can I beautiful. ask you, was this expensive to buy? Because I can't imagine. It was a little pricier than this, yes. Okay, you don't want to divulge what you're doing. Not divulging a thing. What happens at the yarn store stays at the yarn store. That's all I know. Well, that means it was expensive. <laughs> now I have to ditch it. That was very funny. 
<laughs> well, that's very funny. Kind of our color. Yeah. See, who needs to go out and outside? We just need to have a good deal. <laughs> so that's what I got from Knit Stitch. Now, just yesterday, in the mail, arrived my January kit. And it's from the Lola's Club. Um, now, I'm going to let you know. In Canada, we get them later than the people that get them in the States. I'm okay with that because I just love the idea of the kit and all that's in it and what comes and it's a bit of a smaller project. I love that piece. Um, just you have to understand that there is in Ravelry, there's a thread and it there would be spoilers in it. So either don't go look in that if you're in Canada, don't go look at it until you've got your kit or go ahead and look at it. That's what I did. I went, oh, that's exciting. That's what's coming. So this is called Shalola. And I'll tell you what comes in the kit. So first of all, it's the pattern, which is good. You get a code for the pattern. Then this is Farmer's Daughter Yarns. Now it's 50 grams and it's Sokapi. Um, it's called, it says it's Ramboulet. Never worked with any, so I'm happy to try that. I think that's one of those things that will block beautifully. Nice. So that's that. The beads came. So excited about that. That's going to make it a nice match. Exactly. It's beautiful. Gives me some ideas. Then came one of these, which is a thread or a floss, and that helps you get beads on your yarn. Then came um, some post-it notes. And the neat thing about these post-it notes is that this pattern has charts in it. And so this is a way to help you with oh. your charts. We have Lola's choice on Exactly. There. Nice. And then candies, gummies. Candies. When you're hungry, there you go. <laughs> so I was thrilled with that. Like that was, it's a lovely little kit. It's going to be a small thing, but I think that this pattern is going to be a great one to make something for the moms. So whether it is for Mother's Day, whether it's for their birthdays, whether it's for Christmas, I think it's a good idea. You can either do it all with a whole lot of beads or you can do it just a little bit of beads in one spot. Cool. So those are my souvenirs. Excited, happy, wonderful things. And it made her laugh so it makes me happy. <laughs> now, I have some souvenirs. Mm -hmm. um, one that you made. Mm -hmm, I did. It is a pickleball mask. Mm -hmm. Now what they're recommending now is to use a N95 mask. Right. And so we'll wear our N95 mask and we will wear our pickleball mask over top. That's a great because idea. Because when you go to pickleball, which we're on lockdown right now, for those yeah. of you who are live in America or whatever, we're in stage two okay. um, in Ontario. Right. Which means you can't go to the gym, everything's on lockdown, restaurants are closed, we're right. back to there again. Right. And so they recommend these N95 masks. And when we go to pickleball, we have to have our booster shot. When we return, we're not there yet. Right. Uh, we have to have three boosters. And you know what? The masks will just be a safety. We have to wear masks too. Right. Not exactly. when we're on the court. Right. But when we're off the court, we wear masks. Right. And we have to have our booster shots, which Correct. is not a problem. It's no, no big not deal a when you go in and show. Exactly. So uh, that's where we're at in Ontario. And so this was a really cool souvenir. And people saw this at Pickleball mm -hmm. before we were on lockdown. Right. And asked Colleen to make them, uh, four of them, I think I you know. had to make. That's right. And so that was really cool, but it kept you busy. It kept me busy, but yeah. I, that, they're actually nice. Once you get going on things, it, it's Yeah, nice. I really like it. it it's, it. it's a nice fit. And you put this little thing in here yeah. that cl closes on your nose like yeah. that. So it's cool. Yeah, you look great. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. And it gives me lots of room. Exactly. And it will fit over that N95 mask. Right. Another thing that Colleen got for me, which was <laughs> awesome. And for those of you who play pickleball, you'll really appreciate this. And for those of you who don't play pickleball, for me anyway, the biggest part of the game is being able to keep the score. So part of the game is that when it's your turn to serve, you have to say your uh, score, mm -hmm. your opponent's score, mm -hmm. and what server you are. So it would sound something like this. Three, four, one. Mm -hmm. Or three, four, two, depending what server you are. Right. So it gets very confusing. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, because we're a senior uh, league, <laughs> most people, especially me, I forget what 
score it is. Now there are the odd seniors who are brilliant yeah. and they remember and they're the one or two that we kind of count on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I Absolutely. count on them. Um, That's right. But for the most part, uh, most people, including myself, what's what's the score? Uh, what's the score? I don't know. Uh, what server am I? Uh, where am I supposed to stand? Mm -hmm. Very. That's the worst part of the game for me. The, the most difficult part. Exactly. So anyway, calling one online, and this is another thing about the mask. You had to go online to get that material. Down the fabric, yeah. Yeah, fabric online. Yeah. So anyway, Colleen got me a t-shirt that says, you can read it out because I can't. It says, see. who serves? What's the score? What day is it? Who are you people? <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Like if you play pickleball, it's perfect. perfect. <laughs> yeah, and so I love wearing that. Um, so those are my souvenirs and you know, I'm really missing um, the traveling piece of our podcast like, yes. um, Because we are in lockdown. The only thing we have Colleen is to think about where we're gonna go and what we're gonna do Right, exactly. Um, but Ontario government the Ontario as you know that we have ten provinces and we have three territories Yes, three territories. Three territories, ten provinces and we're in the province of Ontario and what the government has done is given us a tax Asian credit like a, oh excellent so if you go on vacation you can uh, get a tax credit if you go like get a hotel a campsite whatever and the whole idea is to get money back into the Ontario economy. right so your travel has to be in Ontario, Ontario. right and so if you want to go on that website if you live in Ontario you can have a look well, we've been all over Ontario like we've been, as you know from our podcast, we've been to Barrie and Collingwood and Niagara Falls and all we, kinds of we haven't where we have been before our podcast was we went to the French River. Right. And that we did a lot of traveling pre podcast. Right, absolutely. And um, it's so beautiful up there. We went there with some friends and we went to this place called uh, I wanna get it right, Lodge at Pine Cove. Mm -hmm. And so I want to recommend Lodge at Pine Cove for any of you that want to travel and stay in Ontario. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but this is going back a few years. Mm -hmm. um, and we went with some friends and they paid up front. They pay, I think they paid, but other things were extra or whatever. And we right. were just splitting right. the bill. Exactly. So we would have, we went kayaking mm -hmm. and they would take beautiful. the kayaks on the French River for us. Then they took us on a boat and they took us to the Docus Reserve. Mm -hmm. And then they gave us a gourmet picnic, mm -hmm. as you can see from these photos here. Right. And then um, they took, when we went on our kayaking trip, uh, they took, gave us a gourmet lunch. Exactly. And they brought that with some coffee. Mm -hmm. And then we, that's where we saw these moose. That was amazing. Now, people have been going up to the French River for years and never saw moose. Like, I can't believe our luck. And exactly. there's, we have the picture here to prove exactly. it. Exactly. We saw these two baby moose going into the water, which yeah. was amazing. It was beautiful. So the whole trip was absolutely phenomenal. They gave us baskets of uh, steaks. So Colleen and I, honestly, it was it was very funny. And like I don't know if you remember, every time we go on an excursion, I'm like, how much is this gonna cost? <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. And then they'd get me to have a gourmet. The when they took us on the boat to the Docus Reserve, and they gave us that lunch. How much is this gonna cost? <laughs> then we went to cut. How much is this gonna cost? Exactly. Look at the meal in that that basket. And then mm -hmm. they brought fresh croissants in the morning, warm. Oh my. They goodness. drove them up, and we were like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a fortune. And then turns out. The entire so Colleen went to pay at the end of our weekend, and we were like, Oh my gosh, better brace ourselves for this whatever one. it is. Because we it. went with other people, and we didn't mm. want to say, Well, we're not going, we don't know how much this exactly. costs, right? right? So, um, then we went there, and I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, the entire weekend of gourmet and trips and kayaking and food, it was phenomenal. It was like $500 for the two of us. I know. It was unbelievable. It was, we were shocked that it was yeah. so little. Right. Now, it was years ago. The prices have Some gone up. I think they were just kind of starting out. Exactly. Um, but even if the prices tripled, it would be worth, it would be worth the trip. Yes, you are I, spoiled, you, that's for sure, when you go there. Yeah. As you can see from the scenery, like the, the sunsets, absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. the, the tranquility of it all. It was gorgeous. Yeah. So I think... Because we're on lockdown and we haven't been going anywhere, my whole thing is I just dream about where we can go back to. <laughs> exactly. And you might be doing the same thing at home. You might be thinking of 
trips in the past and where you could go to in the future. Right. And I thought maybe for a podcast would be cool to go back to the French River area. Right. And I know you're kind of out there. It's like a seven hour drive for, for us. Right. Um, but it's up by Sudbury. Yeah. And so I'm sure there's some yarn stores in Sudbury, Ontario, that we could go to. I'm that sure we haven't there been are. To. <laughs> <laughs> there's yarn stores everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Sault Ste. Marie is up that way. We went Michigan way. Right. Um, up to Mackinac. Right. And we kind of took a shortcut around the Great Lakes. This would be kind of going around the Great Lakes in a long way to go to right. Sault Ste. Marie. I don't know how far that is. But I'm sure there's some yarn stores yeah. in Sault Ste. Marie, too, that we right. haven't gone to. Research. So, there's research that needs to be done. I know. But this is just dreaming. But, I w you know, just going to that French River trip was just, you know, it was just amazing. It was beautiful. Wasn't it? Yeah. It's a great memory, um, that's for Good sure. memories and good trips. And that's all we have right now because of this <laughs> lockdown. But uh, we will, too, get through this and pass this. Exactly. And um, that is my... Uh, Souvenirs. <laughs> That's amazing souvenirs. Yes. So thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate when you come and spend time with us. We appreciate everybody who commented and entered the contest. And so for those winners, um, I will list the winners in the box down below. Um, I'll have them listed. But once again, just contact us in Ravelry. Give us your address and then we'll be able to get those. And sent. thanks for subscribing. And, yes. and continue to subscribe yes so if you're new to us subscribe give us a thumbs up comment down below if there's a craft you want to see if there's a yarn store you think we should either visit online <laughs> or put on our list of stores to visit that's okay too because we really like doing this for you so thanks again for watching and until next time you take care and be safe